Hello and welcome back to our channel where we always do creative projects such as art and craft with paint and clay and all kinds of projects. Now I am Isa and this is my little assistant Aida and you are watching our channel Azantia. Thank you for joining us today and today is a wonderful summer day which means there are a lot of flowers blooming and we decided to do a painting today so stay tuned and learn how to paint a flower painting using multimedia so first I'm going to take my watercolor pad so I'm using this pad with 140 pound paper, 9 by 12 inches. So first of all, I'm going to take watercolor. It does not have to be a specific kind, just any watercolor would do. So all you have to do is get a palette, which I'm going to be using like this. So I love this kind of palette only because it can open and close so if you're using the liquid paints that dry fast, this is the perfect way to keep them from drying out so quickly, which means you just pour the paint inside and cover that. But for the watercolor purpose, we're just going to use this just to mix the color and I'm going to show you how. So the way I like to set up my work station is by placing the paper towel under my water cup. Because when I wash my paintbrush, I like to lay down on, on a paper or it's easier to get the excess paint off. So let's get started. If you don't want your paper to bend when you apply wet paint, it's best to tape it on sides. But uh, for this purpose, I'm just going to do a quick demo for you. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. So I decided to use this palette just because Aida really got attracted to this one. So she's going to be using this palette and I'll be demonstrating with a regular. So first thing first, you put the water inside your palette like this, with a brush. So water girl goes first, clean water like that and then you take whatever color you want so I'm trying to create the background and my background is going to be mostly greenish yellow and reds I would say so I'll start with a lighter color which is going to be my yellow we always start with the yellow So I have a lot of liquid paint, which I want to distribute evenly on one part. And with watercolor, the trick is you have to work really fast before the paint dries out. Because when it dries out, it creates hard edges that you may or may not want in your painting. It depends on what your goal is. Now, before it dries out, I want to mix in the green. And I don't want it to be too green, which is why I'm going to add a little bit of yellow into the paint. Make sure to work the brush every time you're changing the color. That helps to keep the paint clean. I just mixed the yellow into the green, but it's still a little bit too green, so I think I would like to add a tiny bit of orange or red. I'll go with orange, just to dull it off. It creates a more earthy color rather than the toxic green you can see. So 
See how it connects the yellow and the green? If you want to keep your work area clean, you can always use either plastic or tablecloth or something to cover the table, but I'm not too worried about that because watercolor cleans out easily with water and just a rug, so I'm not too worried about that one. There we go. Now we have the basics. That's really, really, really blurry. Just for the special effect. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, look how beautiful it is. If you turn the paper while it's wet, because the technique is called wet and wet. Wet and wet. Ooh, look how beautiful. So the goal here is to create an abstract background. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the colors. Oh my goodness. Look how beautiful. Ha. Okay. Now, in order to speed up the process of drying, I'm going to use a hair dryer. Now, a quick tip. If you have too much water, like I have here, the best way to get rid of it is to just pour it out. And then continue drying it with a fan. See, this is what I mean by the hard edge. So it creates that edge. This is why I have to work with water. Yeah. And smooth it out. Now it's not necessary because this is just the, the background. up with this beautiful background which I am going to be painting on top but using absolutely different kind of paint. We're going to be using the regular washable Crayola. So we're going to put away our watercolor because we're done with that. Okay so first thing first. I would like to start with a background. I'm going to mix white with water. One important thing is to change water. So I just changed my water so it's nice and fresh and clean because otherwise you're going to be painting with paint. I mean, with, yeah, with dirty water. You don't want to paint with dirty water. So I'm trying to get a semi-liquid consistency, if you can see. And now I'm going to take my brush, take my hand, and I'm going to tap it like this. So those are going to be my tiny little white flowers. So the closer to the paper you are, the less mess you're going to make on your table for your clothes. Now step number two. We're going to create green because I'm using primary colors which is red, blue and yellow. And out of these three colors excluding the wet. I'm going to be making all possible other colors. So in order to create my green, I'm going to take my yellow, put it in a different section, and wash my brush. So I have to make sure I wash my brush every single time I'm changing the paint, the color. And then I'm adding a little bit of blue 
red and to my yellow. So if you can see, it's turning green. Now again, I don't want it to be too green, which is why I'm also going to add a little drop, like literally a tiny little bit of red, like on the tip. Maybe that's even too much, but we'll see. I just want a little bit, see how it's turning a little bit brown? So if you use too much red, this is what it's going to do. I don't have one brown. So I'm gonna add more yellow and blue. Because the point here is to have the green, not the brown. Now I get this earthy green. That is exactly the color that I want. We can always make it brighter later by adding more blue and yellow. Okay, now, if before I was using this round brush, now I want to switch to my flat brush. So I'm going to take this tiny little flat brush, this is number two by Craft Painter. See? Very, very tiny. Now I'm going to take my green that we just mixed and I'm going to draw lots of different lines. So these lines are going to be our stamps for the flowers. And for the foreground, I want to mix a brighter green, which means I would have to use again more blue and more yellow because I want this green to be much brighter for the foreground because we just did the middle, middle ground I want it to be juicier and greener like that and with my round brush I'm just going to from the bottom to the top in different directions create an effect of a grass I'm slightly changing the angle because when the wind blows, the grass goes all kinds of different directions. The reason I go from the bottom to the top is because I'm trying to create that soft edge on the top so it represents the grass, see, with the very fine edges. So this is exactly why I'm going from bottom up instead of the other way. There you go. All right. So now, you can use the blow dryer again and speed up the process of drying before we apply the flowers. So now what we need to do is the clean brush makes a new color so I want my flowers to be pink which means I have to mix white with red so I'll take my red and I'm going to place it into my white area like this and mix it well so then you can see how it's turning pink you add the white to the red now if you look at this brush it already has a nice point, see? So what I'm doing is I'm pressing it and letting it go. Then I'm turning the other way. So basically I'm turning my hand and the brush always, all possible ways, all like around the circle. And then it creates that beautiful, beautiful flower. And now I'm going to do that everywhere else. Like this. Turning. 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 So you're not really doing much except for just touching the paper with your brush. And turning it. Touch. And let it go. Touch. Let it go. Touch. Let it go. 
go? Okay, she wanna go? Maybe some of the flowers have not even bloomed yet, so maybe we can do it like this. Like this. And that's it. See, some of them are still little guys. So, yeah. They have not bloomed yet. But I don't just want to have pink flowers, I also want to have purple flowers. So I just washed my brush again and into my pink I would like to mix a little bit of blue so then my pink becomes purple. Oh, that's so pretty. And maybe I want it to be a little bit darker so I'll add more red and more blue. <laughs> So I want to switch to a smaller brush, so I'm going to use a small brush, a small round brush, number three. So with this one, I'm just going to dip it into my paint and start working one. And on each side I'm just pressing and that's it. Press on one side and on each one. So see how my brush travels back and forth like this on one end, flipping it on the other one. Getting more paint and keep going with the same pattern. Add a little bit of white on each section. Now I want to add a little bit of white on each section just to brighten it up a bit. I think it looks cooler this way. It gives it more depth. And also, I think I want to add a little bit of white flowers here and there. It's going to be a full garden, a full summer garden. And I also feel like adding a little bit of yellow and white into the middle of the pink flowers. So I mix a little bit of yellow into my white. And what happens? is that I'm just going to be pressing on the inside now I want to make a darker green I want to make a darker green and add a grassy leaf area so I want to use my tiny round brush for that and create an illusion leaves with a darker green <clears throat> on my foreground. So now we ended up with a very simple yet very beautiful, colorful and summer-like painting. This is our final result of our summer painting and this is the result of my five-year-old. I think that's pretty good. What do you guys think? Please make sure to comment below and let us know what you would like us to make next. I hope you enjoyed our video today and please put a thumb up and make sure you subscribe if you like what we do. Thank you for watching and see you next time.